Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Somebody to me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Inter Furry World. So, y'all, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes of entertaining, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Despite the classes all being more and more boring as the day wears on, I'm still satisfied with the day. I learned a little more about this world, which is always a good thing. There's always the question of why and how I got here, but first things first, there's no point in hurrying. After all, I'd only been here for two days. When it's all over, I look in the direction of Rich's room. He had been in there for a while. I wonder what he was doing in there. When I get up to head to his door and he, come, he comes out, looks at me a little surprised and suggests we go watch a movie before bed. By the time the movie ends, it's pretty late. I go to bed, after a while, and after wishing the Lombaroo a good night, the second day in this new world comes to an end. Day three. Dun 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 dun. Okay, the next day we both go to school. I decide to sit in the same place as the day before. Unlike yesterday, the class is now full. The seats that were free are now taken. Perhaps new students like me? Another dull day. Each class is more boring than the last. Was it even legal to be so uninteresting? After class, Rich and I head home, completely exhausted. I sprawl out on the, I sprawl out on the futon with a long sigh, which makes Lombaroo chuckle as he steps over to look down at me. I see the school day drained your energy, huh? Yeah, it was so boring today. Yeah, I know. Mondays and Tuesdays are always like that. They make you all they make you all gooey. But don't worry, tomorrow won't be so bad. I promise. Uh oh, someone's knocking on the door. Rich glances towards it, eyebrows raised. He could be knocking at this hour. I wonder who it is. I wonder who it is. It's fate. Knock, knock. I'm here. I look over as well as Rich walks towards it, curious to see the person on the other side. When the door opens, it reveals a dragon. Oh. Oh, ooh. Pretty design. He has a purple and white fur, which I find strange for a dragon. Maybe I'm wrong. He looks like one of them. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, Norrell. Good to see you. What are you doing here? Oh, hey, Rich. Uh, I wanted to see my buddy. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Of course not. Come on in. He let the dragon Norrell in and closed the door behind him. That's when he notices me on the futon and raises an eyebrow in disbelief. I remember seeing him in class. Hey, it's... Hmm, what's his name again? Uh, the fleshy thing there. Jesse? Oh, yes, yes, that's what I said. Uh, what are you doing here? He approaches me with a look of curiosity in his emerald eyes as he scrutinizes me from head to toe. I feel myself blushing with so much attention to me. I scratch the back of my head nervously. But, well, Rich invited me to his house and... Suddenly, Norrell grabs my hand. I can't help but yelp in surprise. He, he sniffs it lightly as he holds it up with both of his furry hands. His claws are a little scary to see, but the softness of his fur is reassuring. Hmm, you don't smell like the other monkeys. Oh, um, he's from a different, um, region, that's why. Norrell lets go of my hand and looks at Rich, raising an eyebrow again. From another region? Oh, yes, absolutely. I I'm new here. Nero glares at me again, scratching his chin, humming exaggeratedly as he thinks. I held my breath, hoping that he'll believe me. Then he smiles slightly and nods. Ah, oh, I see. That explains why your smell is so weird. And he smirks, his eyes becoming more predatory, which sends a chill down my spine. And so delicious. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know it makes your mouth water. You do? I was thinking of making a skewer. What do you think, my dear Norrell? Nah, that would be a waste of meat. Let's make a tartar instead. You know the ones with, you know the ones with fartates around? Oh, what a good idea. Hey, I'm not for eating! Well, you know, like the wild boar you see in the movies on a big spit over a fire. Well, Grill, just the thought of it makes me hungry. They're ignoring me! I'm wondering if it's really a good idea to stay with a predator. I worry. I wonder. Okay. Both of them lick their lips as they look at me, then suddenly they start laughing. I mean, don't worry, Jesse. We'd never do that. You know the expression, never say never. Stop it with that! Nora laughs again, then pats the top of my head. All right, all right. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I sigh, relieved, as Nora drops onto the futon. His weight pushes it back a bit, earning some grumbles from Rich. Oi, I told you not to do that. You'll break my futon one of these days. Are you calling me fat? No, but you know dragons weigh a lot more than most mammals, and your fat ass is gonna break it. Noel rolls his eyes and settles comfortably on the futon. Yes, Mom, I know. I'll stop. Good boy. Would you two like a snack? Oh, yes, I'd much appreciate. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, please. Rich nods and heads to the kitchen. Noel looks me over for a second and speaks up. Tell me, Mr. Monkey Boy, how come Rich invited you to his house like that? 
I scratch my cheek nervously as he stares at me intently. Well, I guess he likes me? Hmm. And how do you explain your smell being all over the house? I blink and tilt my head slightly to one side. My smell? Noel nods and points to the guest room. When I entered, I noticed the bedroom here got more of your scent than the other rooms, so you must have slept there, am I right? So how come Rich even invites you to stay over when you've only been here since yesterday, hmm? I feel sweat dripping down my face as I get... Why am I nervous? How do I explain this? Hmm, I... Luckily for me, Rich comes back with a bowl filled with cheese cubes and grapes, which he sets on the coffee table. Oh, good timing! Like, oh, oh, good timing, you can answer my question. Your question? What is it about? Earl points to the guest room again. Looks like Rich is getting a bit nervous, too. How come Jesse is sleeping here? Yeah, well, y you see, he... I have to think of something fast, or Norrell is bound to find out the real reason. If that happens, who knows how... Who knows who we could tell? E... Well, I... I swallow the knot as an idea comes to me. I had nowhere else to go, so Rich agreed to put me up. I scratch my cheek as I look down. I really hope he buys that. Norrell blinks and turns to Rich. Really? <laughs> yeah, exactly! When he got here, he had no place to go. Earl's face is full of compassion when he turns back to me. Oh, I I'm sorry to hear that. It's nothing. It's one of those things you don't shout from the rooftops. I understand, but tell me, Rich. Uh, yeah. You don't find him in a. You didn't find him in a garbage dump, did you? Oh no, no. I saw him in a butcher's shop. I bought them before they became a steak. What? Why did you do that? It was the perfect opportunity. I know. Sometimes I wonder. Hey, again with that. Hush, you. Steaks can't talk. But... Uh, wait. Hush, you. Steaks can't talk. But... But I... Let's take them back where you found them. Hopefully the owner will want to give us a... Will want to give us a discount. Oh yeah, let's go! Quick, go get the rope so the steak doesn't run away. The two of them start sharing knowing looks like that doesn't bode well for me. Rich even pretends to go into the other room before I get up to grab him by the tail. <laughs> a cat and a mouse chase ensues between me and the two predators. Me being the mouse, of course. After a few minutes, everything calms down. The two furries laugh heartily, and I can't help but laugh, too. Once we settle back onto the futon, eating cheese and grapes, Norrell pokes my arm with a finger. By the way, how come you look so much like a human? I almost choke on my food, then I scratch my cheek nervously. Well, I, I, I always wanted to look like them. <laughs> I succeeded? Norrell doesn't look at all convinced. You shave most of your body to look like them? Yes. And did you cut off your tail, too? No, of course not. I have... It's a birth defect. I try to feign embarrassment, even though I didn't have to pretend. He still doesn't look convinced, and his answer surprises me even more. You know, you're a terrible liar. Shudder and a drops of sweat form on my forehead. But I'll have a better lie for you to tell. I blink and look at him, now puzzled. If you want to say you look like a human, you're going to come off as weird. Instead, just say you had chronic fur loss. I look at him with wide eyes, and my gaze turns to Rich, then back to Norrell. That sounds like a good idea, yeah. The dragon smiles and nods. Hey, I may not be a brain on legs like Gogo, -Go, but I can have but I can have good ideas too. It's rare, but it happens, yes. Now you're just jealous of my superior intellect. Rich laughs and mocks Norrell. The two tell stories about each other's misadventures, trying to show who is the dumber of the two. I laugh alongside them, but they get back at me by telling me the, by telling me the ways they'll cook me. As time passes, I figure out that the two of them had been friends for many years. They went to elementary school together, and since then they were always in the same classes. I smile as they recount some of the times they spent together. As Rich takes away the dirty dishes, I look over at Norrell. I'm curious about him, so I think of a question to ask. Tell me, Norrell, what are your hobbies? My hobbies? Hmm. He comically scratches the horn on his muzzle before answering me. For one thing, I like to watch cartoons or anime. Or what kind? I like to watch them too once in a while. On the oh the under eighteen kind, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, the under eighteen kind. Uh oh. Uh oh. FBI, open up! He smiles in a not so reassuring way, which makes me swallow loudly. I also like the classics, Shonen, Nakatsu, anime, some Super super Sentai, too. Lately, I've been watching some Isekai. For cartoons, I go more for the poofy wounds type stuff. The name made me shiver. I understand the kind of show it is, but that name... I see. Do you have any other hobbies? Mm-hmm. I am a coach in my spare time. I raise an eyebrow. My curiosity peaked. Oh, what do you coach? I coach people in eating contests. <laughs> what? 
Well, yeah, you know, like whoever eats the most hot dogs or hamburgers. Yes, I understand that, but how can you be a coach? It's simple. I get people to eat large amounts, but strategically. St strategic? I'm really struggling to imagine any sort of strategy for an eating contest. Seeing my confusion, Norrell explains the basics. If, you've, if you regularly eat a certain amount of food, your stomach will start to grow, which will already give you a certain advantage. Then it's important not to ingest too much liquid, because it takes up space in your belly. Next, you need to eat, at le need, uh, need to eat at a steady pace. Too fast will cause stomach aches, while too slow will make you fall behind, and then... Am I really taking class on how to be a glutton? Rich, please help me! Don't forget to have something sweet if you're eating a salty meal, or something savory if you're... Please come back! Did I miss anything? Thank god, I was finally saved for that endless class! Oh, yes, I was explaining to Jesse how to win eating contests. Oh, I see! I just remembered I forgot something in the kitchen! I'll be right back! I'm stunned as he runs back out of the room, leaving me alone again with the dragon who obviously isn't done with his lecture. Rich, you traitor! I'll remember that! Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 Oh my god. After feeling my soul trying to escape my body to get away from this ordeal, Norrell finally ends his 101 class. Rich returns shortly thereafter, miming a silent sorry with his lips. <coughs> oh, goodness. Ow. Oh, God, I think a chunk of my brain went out of that one. Good lord. Okay. The three of us agree to eat pizza and watch a good movie. The Lombaroo orders the meal and joins us in the living room afterwards. He puts a few movies and TV shows on the coffee table in front of the futon so we can choose which one. I don't... I don't have a preference. What do you want to watch? I personally like them all. It's hard to pick with just one. The two look at me, obviously leaving me the choice of what to watch. I see what my choices are, scratching my chin thoughtfully. What should I choose? A hell of a boss. Ninja Handler versus the Speak. A hell of a, yeah, a hell of a boss. It's a damn good show. Hmm, let's go with this one. It sounds interesting. Rich nods and sets it up, then rejoins us on the futon. Hell of a boss. It reminds me of a web series I've seen back home. Very vulgar and rude, but really funny. And a lot of songs, too. This furry version wasn't much different, really, but instead of having humans in it, the stars were animals. During the movie, the pizza finally arrives. Okay, let's see. Let's see. What else we got? My uh, ninja. Ninja Handler versus the Space Vikings. Hmm, let's go with this one. It sounds interesting. Rich nods and sets it up, then rejoins us on the futon. The title has me highly intrigued. I don't remember seeing this in my world. First thing that strikes me is the main character, a deer sporting a Charlie Chaplin mustache. With a strong accent reminded me of... Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> Antopia. Hmm. Let's go for let's go for this one. It seems interesting. Rich nodded and set up everything, then came getting then came getting comfy on the futon with us. Mantopia. I wonder if it's like that animated movie. I'm surprised to see that instead of animals, like how a similar movie back home was, the story revolves around humans. Instead of predators and prey, it's a war between whites and other ethnicities. Oh, God. Just, so we're just regular human history. Uh-oh. I feel very uneasy as I watch the film. Yeah, sounds about right. Iguana bones. Hmm. Let's go with this one. Sounds interesting. Rich nods and sets it up, then rejoins us on the futon. Like I expected, the story was the same was the same, was the same in the scenario from the movie series in my world. But instead of humans, they were animals. It's funny to see an iguana afraid of a snake. Iguana bones. Could have just called him Iguana Jones. Paw fiction. Mm, let's go with this one. It sounds interesting. Rich nods and sets it up. There and joins us on the futon. The movie revolves around gangsters, just like my world's version, but starring animals, of course. Samuel L. J L. Jackson is fun to watch. Kind of like a snake with limbs. Kind of like the Nagas in video games. During the movie, the pizza finally arrives. The delivery girl is an antelope with a big backpack, from which the smell of her other deliveries wafts in. I don't see a car, however. Yes, yeah, because she's an antelope. She's running. Does she walk for work? Her face tells me something, and considering how young she appears to be, she probably does this, goes to the same kind of school as the three of us. My suspicions are confirmed when the two animals speak with her. They had known each other for a few years, but from the conversation they had, they weren't friends. It's more of a courtesy exchange than anything else, and I feel a little left out. Norrell paid for the meal along, along with a smile. We thank him for his generosity, then cut out the slices for each of us. Two for me, two for Rich, and a pizza and a half for Norrell. Wait, weren't you supposed to cut equal parts? Well, I did. One part for you, one part for Rich, and one for me. He grins. Rich puts a hand on my shoulder and shakes his head slightly as if to let me know that it's a waste of time. As we eat, I see what he means. Norrell is gobbling up his meal. Looks like he hasn't eaten in forever. Noticing my surprise, Rich chuckles and whispers in my ear. 
Noral. Noral has a special metabolism. He needs a huge amount of food to stay in shape. I see. The worst part is that he doesn't even get fat. Seriously? Well, I think about it. He did mention he coaches people for eating contests. Some people are luckier than others, I guess. When the movie ends, the dragon has to go home, since we have class the next day. He wishes us sweet dreams at the door, then leaves. Rich closes the door behind him before locking it for the, not locking it for the night. The Lombrou then returns to the living room, stretching. His large ears move like they're stretching, too. So tell me, what do you think about him? I blink as I look at him, a little surprised by his question. What do I think about Norrell? Yeah, I know he can be weird, but he's got a good heart, don't, don't worry. Think of it before answering. Weird is a good way to describe him, but he seems nice anyway, even if he likes to have fun at my expense. He's definitely interesting. Rich chuckles at his remark and, and picks up the dishes and trash before we go to bed. I think back to the lie the dragon had offered. Would it work? It's certainly better than making it up as we go as I go like I had been doing until now, no doubt. I, I hope, however, that I don't have to use it anytime soon. Since we have gym class the next day, I pack my bag ahead of time. Shorts, a camisole, as well as athletic shoes. It's funny to see you see that you bought sneakers. It's rare to see people with them on their feet. What about what about them? Hmm. Shoes in general. Shoes, running shoes, shoes, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, now I understand. It's true that with paws and pads, but especially their claws, they don't need protection. But I, with my fragile human skin, need it, especially to run. We were lucky the other day to find a store that sold them. Since the clientele was mostly monkeys or animals who didn't want to ruin their manicure, I quickly found something to suit my needs. Which gets me thinking, with such big kangaroo paws, there can't be many pairs of shoes that fit rich. It's not like he, it's not like he needs them, but at the same time, does he really walk barefoot all the time? Even in the winter on the gravel? After imagining him wearing clown shoes, we both head off to bed. Another day in this world comes to an end. Day 4. Already on Wednesday, time was moving much faster than I expected. The day was going better than the others, for now at least, as Rich had told me the worst two days of school were over. During the break between the first two periods, Alain Baru took me to see Norrell's practice for his contests. Although the view was, shall we say, unappetizing, it was still fun to watch him do so. And then finally came dinner time. I was awfully hungry despite the show earlier. Just as I turned the corner to head to the cafeteria as my stomach was screaming for food, I passed a young black and white dragon. A lot of dragons in this. Not that I'm complaining, I fucking love dragons. I am one! I can't wait to see their finished art. I remember seeing him in the classroom. However, I couldn't remember his name. Um, hey, hello! I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Till the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye